Good day, Sai folks! I'm back for another episode of Fun and Learning. Join me as we explore, discover, and enjoy life through science. Be ready with your modules, your notes, and everything you need for this episode. All set? Great! This is Teacher MJ, and this is DepEd TV. Last week, we talked about Newton's three laws of motion. Can you recall the three laws? Right, the law of inertia, the law of acceleration, and the law of interaction. This week, we are going to understand another lesson, the potential energy and kinetic energy. Our goal, we have to identify and explain the factors that affect potential energy and kinetic energy. Quite familiar with these terms? Perhaps you know something about potential and kinetic energies. To find out, try answering these questions. Let's see how far you know about our lesson. An object from a certain height falls freely. Which of the following happens to potential energy and kinetic energy when the object is half on its way down? A. Loses potential energy and gains kinetic energy. B. Gains potential energy and loses kinetic energy. C. Loses both potential energy and kinetic energy or D gains both potential energy and kinetic energy The correct answer is A loses potential energy and gains kinetic energy A ball is thrown vertically upward how do you compare the potential energy of the ball at the highest point compared to its kinetic energy? A. Potential energy is greater than the kinetic energy. B. Potential energy is equal to kinetic energy. C. Potential energy is lesser than kinetic energy. Or D. Kinetic energy is greater than potential energy. The correct answer is A. Potential energy is greater than kinetic energy. Which of the following quantities has the greatest influence on the amount of kinetic energy of a car while traveling on a highway? A. Mass B. Size C. Velocity or D. Weight The correct answer is C. Velocity Which of the following pair of quantities are the factors that affect kinetic energy? A. Force and distance B. Mass and height C. Mass and velocity or D. Time and height The correct answer is C. Mass and Velocity For questions 5 and 6, refer to this illustration. Which point has increasing kinetic energy? A. Point C B. Point B C. Point A Or D. Point A and C.
The correct answer is A. Point C. Which point has the greatest potential energy? A. Point A. B. Point B. C. Point C. Or D. Point A and C. The correct answer is B. Point B. Which of the following statements is true about potential energy? A. It is dependent on the velocity of an object. B. It does not depend on the mass of the object. C. It does not depend on the strength of gravity. Or D. It is affected by the mass and location of an object with respect to the ground. The correct answer is D. It is affected by the mass and location of an object with respect to the ground. Which of the following does not affect the amount of potential energy of an object? A. Mass B. Velocity C. Height or location or D. Strength of gravity The correct answer is B. Velocity the following applies the concept of potential energy except A. Water in a dam B. A person playing the guitar C. A rock sitting at the edge of a cliff Or D. Three branches high up in a tree The correct answer is B. A person playing the guitar. What happens to the kinetic energy of an object if its velocity is doubled? A. Twice as much. B. Twice as much. C. Increases four times. Or D. Decreases four times. The correct answer is C. Increases four times. Did you get all the items right? If not, no worries. At the end of this week's lesson, you'll understand everything. With that being said, let's start our discussion. What is work and what is energy? What comes to your mind when you hear of the word work? Work has a lot of meanings, right? It may refer to a job, it may refer to tasks, or simply everything we do that requires us to move and exert energy. In physics, work is an abstract idea that is related to energy. An object needs energy to be able to do work. Consider the familiar Filipino street game, Tumbang Preso, where a slipper is aimed towards an empty can. When the slipper is thrown by a person, an applied force is exerted on it, thus work is done. The slipper then possesses kinetic energy while moving towards the can, which is stationary. As the slipper interacts with the can, the sleeper loses energy while the can gains energy. When this happens, the energy of the sleeper is transferred to the can. This tells us that objects which are in motion has energy and can do work. Energy is the ability or capacity to do work. 
Its unit is the same as the unit of work expressed in Joule in the SI system or the international system of units. One Joule of energy is needed to accomplish one Joule of work, meaning the amount of energy in Joules is equal to the amount of work done in Joules. To better understand our lesson, let's discuss first what work really means. As we said, work is related to energy. To be able to do work, energy is needed. But when do we say that work is done? Do you think work is done here? Yes! Work is done if the object being pushed moves in a distance to the same direction where it is being pushed. What about in this one? Is there a work done? In this case, there is no work done because the force exerted by the girl did not make the wall move. For the last example, do you think there is a work done? Again, there is no work done. That is because the force exerted did not make the book move in its direction. With these examples, we can say the work is done only if the force makes the object move in the same direction as it is exerted. I hope we are all clear and understood the concept of work. Now let's proceed with Potential Energy and Kinetic Energy. Let's start with Potential Energy. What is Potential Energy? When we say Potential Energy, we refer to the energy stored in an object or substance which is based on its position, arrangement, or state. To understand it better, let's take a look at this. Who do you think is doing work? Is it the table, the box, or the man? Obviously, the man is doing work on the box. To be more specific, the force applied by the boy in lifting is doing work on the box. What is the direction of the motion of the box? That's right! It is directed upward. As we said earlier, work is a way to transfer energy. Hence, when the man exerted force in lifting the box, he loses energy. Work is done on the box, and the box gains energy. In our previous lesson, we learned that the force of gravity is the force exerted by the Earth and all things. It is always directed towards the center of the Earth. When an object is raised from the Earth, the force exerted in lifting the object is equal to its weight. We write it as Force is equal to weight, which is equal to mass times the value of gravity. Meanwhile, the work done in lifting the object is written as Work equals the force multiplied by displacement. The displacement is the height the object is raised. Or work equals mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. This shows that the work done in lifting an object is equal to the potential energy gained by the object. We then write it as potential energy equals mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. Let's try this problem. Jenny lifted a book with a mass of 1.5 kilograms at 0.9 meter above the floor. What is the potential energy gained by the book? First, let's write the given values. Mass is at 1.5 kilograms. Height 
at 0.9 meter and the acceleration due to gravity at 9.8 meters per second squared. We then solve the potential energy using PE equals M times G times H, where mass is equal to 1.5 kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared and height is equal to 0.9 meter. We get 13.23 kilograms meters squared per second squared, which is also 13.23 joules. Easy, right? Now do this problem independently. A toolbox with a mass of 3.2 kilograms is lifted 1.2 meters from the garage floor. Find the work done on the toolbox and the potential energy gained by the toolbox. You have a minute to solve it. Done? What is your answer? Very good! The answer for both the work done and potential energy we are looking for is 37.6 joules. Were you challenged? I hope you had so much fun with our discussion today. Catch our next episode tomorrow on kinetic energy and surely you'll have another fun-filled side day. Keep safe everyone. This is your teacher MJ, your partner in exploring, discovering, and enjoying life. This is DepEd TV.